Quite often while building Power BI models, you're going to come across a fact of a fact relationship. These kind of relationships are called snowflake schemas. And there are some interesting nuances while dealing with snowflake schemas, especially when you're creating calculations between these two kinds of tables. The results may seem right, but they're going to be incorrect. In this video, we're going to explore such calculations. We'll take a look at the nuances and then where do we go wrong? Most importantly, how do you validate and fix your DAX? All right, let's just do this together. All right, people, I'm in Power BI here. Let's just first take a look at the data model. So up on the top, we have two dimensional tables, the products and the calendar, which are on the one side. They are connected to the sales table, which is on the many side of the relationship right here and right here. Considering these three tables, this is a pure play, pristine star schema that we originally speak about. Connected to the sales table, we have the refunds table, which is on the many side of the relationship, and the sales table is on the one side of the relationship. So this is like a fact table of the fact table, which is nothing but the sales table, which is on the one side of the relationship. Now the question is, what business scenario creates a fact of a fact table. Like why do we have the refunds duplicated right here? And why do we have the sales on the one side of the relationship? Let's just go take a look at the granularity of the sales table. So if I just go over to the sales table, in the sales table, you're going to see that we have transaction IDs. Let's just sort the dates in the ascending order. So we have one unique transaction per row of the data. This is one transaction, the second transaction, the third transaction, the fourth transaction. And therefore we have something called as a transaction ID which makes this particular table unique. Now, once you are selling products in a company, those products can be asked for a refund. So consider this particular product, for instance, 104J11, we have five units sold. And the same transaction can appear in the refunds table multiple number of times, till the time you have all the units refunded right here. So if you just go ahead and take a look at the refunds table, and if I sort the transaction ID in the ascending order, you're gonna see that a couple of transaction IDs do repeat. Let's just take a look. So we have this particular transaction ID repeating, which is 226J11. There were multiple units sold in this particular transaction, but when the refund was claimed, it was claimed in two different instances of time. And therefore, this is what makes this as a fact table to our original fact table, which is nothing but the sales table. Now, the question that I'm trying to solve here is a very simple. I just want to know how many units were refunded. That's all that I would want to know. I don't really want to care about the refund status, pending or complete. I just want to know how many units were refunded. That's it. So how do we do that? I'm gonna go back to my visual right here, which is where I have the year and the month coming from my calendar table. And that's a, just a base measure that I have created, which is nothing but total sales. And that's where I also wanna create a secondary calculation, which is nothing but units refunded. Now, I'm just gonna go over to the refunds table and make a very simple calculation for units refunded, which I've already written by the way, which is nothing but, hey, go to the refunds table, there is a unit refunded column, please sum those values and keep those values right here. If I drag that to the pivot table right here, I'm gonna get a few values. Let's go month by month and try to take a look at the values. So in the month of May, it says that you have one unit refunded. Let's just go take a look at that. I can go over to the refunds table and that's where I have created another helper column just for me to be able to select the dates easily. I can just go right here and take a look at May 11. So May 11 check that, click on okay. And yes, there was one unit refunded. So that seems to be the right answer. Let's just check one more for confirming purposes. So I'm gonna go back and take a look at June right here. This is number four. So in the month of June, let's just go take a look. So I can just filter it right here and take a look at the month of June right here. Click on okay. And that is not four. That is actually two units refunded. So why do I get to see the answer four, whereas I just have two units refunded. The answer lies in the way that we have built the relationship between the multiple tables at the back. And we'll explore through the filter context, propagate the relationships, and then try to be able to see that why are we getting four as an answer. So picking up this particular number, four, there are two filter contexts for that number, which is the month of June and the year of 2011. And these two filters, June and 11, they will first be applied to the calendar table and let's just do that. So I'm gonna come right here in the calendar table and I will apply two filters, which is 2011 
and the month of June right here. And now I get a 30 days period of the month of June. Now, if you take a look at the relationships between the calendar table and the sales table, we have the date connected. Now, all of those 30 days that we just filtered in the calendar table are going to come and filter my sales data. And in the sales data, I will only have those transactions which were sold between 1st June to the 30th of June. Once I have all the transactions which are sold between the 1st and the 30th of June in the sales table filtered, then those transactions will filter my refunds table through which column, through this particular transaction ID column, and that is the transaction ID right here. So what I'm gonna do is, in order for me to take a look at how the relationship is transitioning, I'm gonna write two VLOOKUPs, especially in the refunds table, because the refunds table is connected to the sales table through the transaction ID, and the sales is connected to the calendar through the date column. So that's gonna be good. So I'll just go to the refunds table. In the refunds table, I'll first of all, remove the filters, right click and make a new column. I'm gonna call this as a helper VLOOKUP for month year. And that is gonna come from my calendar table. So calendar table, I will pick up the month and then I'll concatenate the VLOOKUP for the year. And if you don't know how the related function works, you can actually take a look at another video that I have done on related that is gonna help you understand that how VLOOKUPs work in Power BI, especially in DAX. I do that, I get the VLOOKUP from the calendar table. I'll right click, I'll do another VLOOKUP, which is nothing but the VLOOKUP for the transactions, so transactions. And this is going to be related, my sales table, and the transaction ID, close the bracket and press enter. And these are all the transaction IDs through the sales table. Now let's just apply the filters once again, which is the filter for the month and the filter for the year, June 11. So June 11, right here, click on okay. And now if you take a look at the data, this is how the filters were propagating between the tables. So this filter, which is June 11, is for all the transactions that were sold in the month of June that got refunded. So if you take a look, there are two transactions, this particular transaction and this transaction, they were sold. So if I just maybe take a look at their sales date, so if I just maybe concatenate the sales date along with that, so related, and I'll say, hey, please take a look at the sales date along with this. So press enter, add a little dash in between as well, and that, press enter. Now, if you take a look, both of these transactions were sold in the month of June. That is good. But they got refunded in two separate months. The first one got refunded on the 30th of June and the second one got refunded on the 30th of July. And that is the reason why we have the discrepancy in the numbers. What you're taking a look at, which is this particular number, is the number of units that got refunded which were sold in the month of June. They were not refunded in the month of June, but they were sold in the month of June. All right, with this long explanation, at least we have been able to figure out what the problem is and how the relationships are propagating between the two tables. So how do we solve this problem practically? I'm gonna go back and start to tweak my model. If I were to delete this particular relationship, and if I were to build another relationship directly from the refund date and the calendar date, then what is gonna happen is that any filter which is coming from the sales table or the products table is not going to be able to filter our calculation because the only filter that is going to be present between the refunds and the calendar is going to be the date filter. That means you would not be able to see refunds by region or refunds by channel, refund by the name of the product. Nothing of that is going to be available to you because we have deleted this relationship. Well, the second way to do that is that you take this particular refund date and you connect it with the calendar table and you build a secondary but inactive relationship. So if you take a look, we have been able to build an inactive relationship. It's dotted. It's not really the type of relationship that we typically build, not a solid line, but a dotted line. And now we're going to tell Power BI that, hey, Power BI, whenever you have a filter from the calendar table, which is the year and the month, any filter from the calendar table, please do not use this particular path. So do not use this path to go to the refunds table use this direct path to go to the refunds table and directly filter the date right here. That is what I need to say. So what am I gonna do? I am going to go ahead and modify my calculation just a little bit and I'm gonna say calculate and I'm gonna say that in the calculate function, the second part is going to be now use a secondary relationship, which is nothing but from the calendar table and the refunds table. Now note that this relationship is only going to work 
in case the dotted line or the inactive relationship exists between the two tables. In case you've not made it and you're writing this particular formula, it is going to give you an error. All right, press enter. Let's just take a look at the result. We have two transactions in the month of June, two transactions in the month of July because the same transaction was refunded in the month of June and July. That shows up pretty nicely. All right, that was a little tutorial on how to deal with snowflake schemas, especially when you have a fact of a fact table and what are the nuances and how do you deal with uh, debugging the problems? How do you take a look at validation of the results? And then how do you actually fix the problem? Let me know if you have encountered this problem in the past and if this video was helpful. Should you have any questions, please post them down in the comments below. And in the end, I'd like to give a big shout out about my DAX, M Language, and Power Query courses. In case you're a beginner and you'd like to build solid foundation of learning the fundamentals really well, and then moving up to a level where you start solving more sophisticated, more dense problem, even of your own data, I'd highly recommend that you please take a look at my courses. It's going to be super awesome. Thanks so much for sticking all around and I will catch you guys in the next one. Cheers, bye now.